So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amir. I'm presenting GPS stack refinement um, using random walks with an adaptive damping factor. It's joint work with Shervin uh, Ardishi and Dr. Mbarksha. Um, so most of the images nowadays are coming with GPS stack. Most of the pictures that you take uh, with your cell phones or all devices are have some sort of GPS stack in them, and, and they are coming with with internal GPS tags or w, uh, WPS signals or cell tower signals. So. Uh, there is a known issue with these tags, and that is there is a lot of inaccuracies in them. Uh, for instance, here you can see um, each blue dot shows um, the GPS tag of one image provided by user, and the red dot shows the um, correct GPS tag that we found using manual tagging. And the, um, as you can see, most of the time the, the blue and red dot corresponding dots are very close to each other. It means the error is not that much, but there are long, long green lines that you can see them here as well. It, uh, it means there is a lot of uh, inaccuracies in GPS tags that can't be ignored. So we did a statistical study on about 8,000 images from Pittsburgh, and we found that about 30% um, of user-provided tags are incorrect. And uh, the plot on the right shows the, uh, the inaccuracy in them, about like in that 30%. And see, like, the error is about 450 meters, which is pretty significant. So in this paper, uh, we propose a method for solving this problem. That is, given a large data set of um, images, we want to identify what subset of them have inaccurate GPS tags and we want to fix them to the right location. We do self-refinement. That means we don't need any other data set. Um, we use the data set itself to, do, to solve this problem. And also, we have a robust framework. That means we have an internal mechanism for dealing with uh, all these outliers. So here's the um, block diagram. I'll explain. I'll go over details, but it has image matching, triple estimation, and random walks, basically. So, um, so the first is we do image matching. Given an image that we want to find its GPS tag, we um, go to the rest of the data set. We go to the rest of the data set and find all the matching images, which are visually similar to it. Then we form image triplets. An image triplet is formed uh, among like one query, one the image that we want to refine its tag, and two of the reference images. We find correspondences uh, among all these three images, and using trifocal tensor and structure for motion techniques, we estimate one GPS location for for this image. And that GPS location, what trifocal is giving you, uh, by the way, is the relative location of all these three images. But we know the GPS location of these two reference images that we got matched to. So using those two reference images and the relative location of these three images, we can estimate one location for the, for the image that we're interested in. And that <coughs> estimation is shown here on the um, east-north of GPS uh, system. So we move on to the next feasible triplet. And we've come up with another estimation, which is again shown here um, on the plot. And we do this for all of the feasible estimations that we have. And we come up with a large number of estimations for the GPS location of the image that we're looking at. So, um, so these estimations are coming from the GPS locations of those images that got matched to, to the actual image. So all of these are expected to have a lot of inaccuracies. So, uh, we do random walks in these estimations to identify the subset which are consistent and are expected to be accurate consequently. So random walks, you might have heard about it. It's a special case of Markov chain with a reversibility um, characteristic and a few like uh, different character, um, like you know, additional properties compared to Markov chain, but it's in fact a special case of Markov chain. So. It's, it's a diffusion method. So intuitively, if you have a score, like you have a graph, you know the relationship between the nodes, pairwise relationship between the nodes of this graph. And for each node, you have some prior knowledge. If you want to diffuse these information in the entire graph, you can use a diffusion method. And that's what we use random walk for. So for instance, like imagine somebody, um, look at this graph. Like somebody wants to walk from one node of this graph to another according to a predefined probability. So after a sufficiently large number of walks, what you expect to see is that the nodes which are consistent to each other and closer according to that predefined similarity that we had, those should be visited more often. And the ones which are like scattered and solitary, they should be visited less often. So if you define a score based on the number of visits, you'll get something like that. 
So the parts of the graph which are denser and closer to each other, more consistent, they will be visited more often. The ones which are far away and not so consistent, they will be visited less often. So that's what we call the relevance score in random walks. So we want to do that in the estimations that we got. So the, relevant, the transition function or the similarity function that we define is, a, uh, uh, is basically, you can see here, it's a uh, normalized exponential. That simply says if two uh, estimations are far from each other, they're less likely to both belong to the right location. And if they're close to each other, both of them are consistent. They could be wrong or right, but it's a pairwise consistency. Um, so given the estimations that we have, um, the normalized uh, exponential, after running random walks, this is what we get. So um, on the plot on the right, you can see that the uh, relevance scores are color-coded, those final scores that we talked about. So the nodes which are like clustered, close to each other, more consistent, they got a higher relevance scores. The ones which are like far away from the rest and they're less likely to belong to the right location, they, are, they got a very, few, very low relevance score. So given these relevance scores that random walk give us, now we want to estimate the actual GPS location. And we use that, uh, we do that uh, by a weighted mean. So for each of these locations, um, we have in fact the relevance score and the actual GPS location. So we find, we use weighted mean for finding the one single GPS location using all of these. So here you can see the results actually. So the green, um, the green marker shows the ground truth, and the blue marker shows the refined location that we found using random walks. And you see, they are very close to each other. But the, in it, um, the user specified tag is much further than uh, from the ground truth compared to the refined location. Also, we incorporate the geodensities of images in this process. So, if you look at the user shared images, they are. They are, uh, their distribution is very non-uniform because they're biased by where the landmarks in the city are interesting spots where tourists are. So they're not uniform. So you see like each point here shows one image from the um, from Panoramio for a DC area. So this acts as a bias in the re refinement uh, framework that we have. So we extract some density measures from this, which is simply like for each of these locations, we look at the nearby uh, for each of the uh, each of the dots, we look at the nearby location and see how many other GPS uh, GPS tag image exists in the data set for that area, and that gives us an um, an idea about the density of user shared images for each spot, and we uh, we incorporate that in the random walks in the damping factor term. So random walk formulation, like for instance, this is the relevance score of one node. There, there is two major terms in it. Like there is one Markov chain term and there is a damping term. Damping term, in fact, like allows you to incorporate some prior knowledge about each node in the data. So we use uh, this prior knowledge term for incorporating the geodensity. Um, however, there is one major problem in damping factor in random walks in the basic form. So um, as you see, what, what it is, it's a linear mixture of the Markov chain term and the uh, and the damping factor term. So the output is always directly linked to the input, and that violates the robustness assumption. That's because if the input in the prior knowledge that you have, there is some inaccuracies, there is some error there, that's going to be directly reflected in the output, which is bad. So we want a filter halfway through it. So our solution to this problem is proposing a adaptive damping factor term for random walks. Um, after plugging the adapting damping factor, the updated formulation of random walk is that, but what in fact it does is that, as, like in this adaptive term, instead of having uh, just the initial score, we make the initial scores conditional on the irrelevance scores. So far, best relevance score uh, of each node. That way, if the one node is like very solitary, very isolated, not consistent in anything else, the initial knowledge about that score, that node is not going to incorporate in the final. Uh, it's not going to be incorporated in the final relevance score. So that's, why, that's the way we make the random walks like robustified by, by making damping factor term adaptive. So we did our experiments on uh, about 18,000 images from three different cities. And for a test set, we randomly selected about 500 images and there, they, we found their GPS tag, like ground truth GPS tag manually. Um, so this plot shows the distribution of error in the input and output. The input is shown uh, in blue and output is shown in red. So as you see, the red distribution, which is the output, 
the error in the output after refinement is much skewed to the left compared to the input, which shows like the error has decreased in the output after refinement. Also, this shows the um, a scatter plot of the same uh, population from which the distribution was was drawn. And each, in the scatter plot, each node represents uh, one image in the data set, like one of those 500 images that we have. So anything beyond, uh, uh, anything actually like in this area higher than the main diagonal, it means the error in the output is, was less than in the error in the input. Like refined error was less than the user's error. And as you see, most of the nodes appear like in this area, which means like we have made a significant improvement in the, uh, in the error values. Also, we evaluated the proposed damping factor term that we had. So um, the red and green distribution, green is using constant damping, and red is using the adaptive damping. Again, you can see the, the, the distribution using the adaptive damping is much skewed to the left. Uh, this is the same thing, but using a different linear mixture. And this plot shows the mean error for different linear mixtures. In all the linear mixtures, like no matter what alpha value you pick, the adaptive damping factor always does much better than the constant damping, which means like the, no matter what linear uh, mixture you pick, adaptive damping factor is superior to constant damping. Also, the, uh, the idea that we have about incorporating the geo densities. So this, this is the evaluation of that. So uh, we have different linear mixtures, different error values, and then uh, refinement results using two different settings. Geo density incorporated and uniform value, which means geodensity not incorporated. As you can see in almost all of the cases, geodensity does either the same as uniform or much better. In most of the cases, actually, it's much better. So it shows the uh, importance of uh, using the geodensities. And also impact of the structure for motion. Um, so we do not have to use the structure for motion. Once you do the retrieval, we can use the GPS tags of those retrieved images as an estimation for the for the GPS lag of the image that you're trying to refine. So if you do not use a structure for motion, you can just immediately use those GPS lags. And this uh, uh, scatter plot shows actually that experiment. So if it compares the using the just geotags as compared to the um, location estimation got from a structure for motion. Um, as you would expect, the structure for motion makes the results slightly better, like 38% compared to 47%. But <coughs> Keep in mind that the error in the input is like thousands of meters. So both of these settings have made a significant uh, improvement in the overall results, but the structure for motions is slightly, slightly better. But in fact, the point is like you do not have to use a structure for motion. If you can't, if you don't have enough images, or if the finding correspondence or fundamental, fundamental matrix fails, and so on. And that's it. Any questions? We have, um, yeah, I mean, correspondence, I mean point correspondences between images. So for image retrieval, you might, like, five correspondence could bring you the right image, but if you want to find fundamental matches, it's really like trifocal tensor, which is among three images, you have to have a large number of them and fit ransack. So not always when you have a correct match, you can find good fundamental matrix too. So actually like with the experiments that we were doing with Trevin, like the biggest problem we had was we could retrieve good images, but we could not do a structure for motion on them. It would fail. Um, because simply it's like, sometimes it's too difficult to find these SIFT correspondences. So those you're showing are independent of your method. Which one? The, 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 the row, the last plot. This one? Yeah, the search motion method does not use any of the methods. No, it does. It's like a whole image. No, the, like what I explained like earlier, like triplet estimation, trifocal tensor is in fact this one. But what you could do is that skip the trifocal part. Once you retrieve matches, yeah. So in, in the point is like I would expect that these data sets are becoming so dense, like people are uploading pictures from every single spot. So once you do retrieval, you're expecting to have images from the same spot. So a structure for motion doesn't give you anything. Yeah. If the like, data set is so sparse, or like you're going to in the middle of like a desert that you don't have like images from the same spot, you need to some content-based reasoning to get some estimations for the actual location. But that doesn't really make a difference in urban area. And in the future, it's going to be even less. Yeah.